Thank you, Rajni. Thank you so much for the kind introduction. And uh, I must thank uh, the organizers for the kind invitation for this presentation. And I hope I'll be able to keep you awake <laughs> in the post-lunch session. So uh, this is uh, um, maybe if we can settle down. OK. So this is one of the uh, topic that uh, I have been you know, working on uh, throughout my acad uh, academia as well as industry career, which is the transfer of uh, technologies and uh, uh, working in Serum Institute, Biological E, Hillman Laboratories, and now Hester Biosciences. So I've been involved in multiple tech transfers, be it between the organization or within the organization. So I thought of, you know, this is a very interesting topic, which I thought of taking to all the audience. And yeah. The topic uh, will be covered uh, basically in the stages of vaccine development then what are the need of technology transfers uh, during the whole lot of uh, vaccine R&D and manufacture. And when uh, there are some steps, then we have some complexities and we have to solve them as a team. So there will be several challenges and the different avenues for uh, taking up those challenges uh, I'll share uh, very briefly. And I'll summarize my presentation post that. As we all know, uh, the vaccine development is not a simple process as uh, Dr. Sahai in the morning uh, shared. It generally took 12 to 15 years earlier and I am aware of the vaccines which have taken 30 years of research and still a very efficient vaccine against dengue, for example, has not come in picture or malaria has not come in picture. HIV is still in waiting. So these are the basic stages of vaccine development, which is preclinical uh, pre exploratory research. Before that, the basic research is required. Then we go into the phase one clinical trial, phase two, phase three clinical trial, and post-licensed, uh, post-marketing surveillance studies that are uh, uh, to be done. I don't want to go into the exact details, but uh, all these stages, they require a lot of uh, efforts from different stakeholders uh, in the organizations. The organizations may be the academic labs, industry R&D labs, translational research labs, manufacturing, quality control, QA, RA, sub supply chain management, engineering team, CROs, CDMOs, CMOs, etc. Everything, they are the key stakeholders in, and these are just the limited uh, uh, list. And there is a no need to transfer the know-how from one organization to the uh, other organization uh, in this whole process of whatever number of years we have to do the research. So this is a snapshot of the different organizations that are required to be involved in the, uh, uh, in the vaccine development. Academic research labs, industry research labs, and uh, I would like to just share some of the key functions that these lab, uh, labs do, and I'm just specifically focusing on the vaccine research and development and manufacture. So the basic uh, technology research, new vaccine candidates to be identified, new vaccine technologies to be identified, new adjuvants to be identified, new assays, new animal models. Then we have proof of concept studies epidemiological studies and correlate of protection studies. These are some of the areas that I could, you know, immediately highlight that these are the things that we generally get from academic research labs. And the same kind of research can be done in industry settings also, basic industry uh, R&D labs, but this kind of setup is not there available in India to that extent as on date. But I wish very strongly that if this can come up in India also so that the translation from academia to industry or the industry R&D to the uh, next uh, uh, labs can come up uh, very strongly. Then in some of the organizations uh, in the companies itself, there are some translational research labs or uh, we call it them as MSET, uh, Manufacturing Science and Technology Labs where we do the translation from the proof of concept studies, either uh, from the technology taken from uh, the academic labs or from the industry R&D labs, 
take it to the manufacturing status, scale up studies and then troubleshoot analysis in the technologies. In manufacturing QC labs and then clinical research team, they would do the vaccine manufacture, vaccine quality control, drug substance and DP release. Clinical trials have to be conducted and this is a complex domain as uh, you might know. And then sometimes there are industry industry collaboration based on, based on the business needs, like we have seen so many examples in the COVID uh, pandemic. There we could have a POC to manufacture, for example, taking uh, technologies from uh, industry uh, R&D or academic lab to the uh, industry collaborator. Manufacturing at the scale of transfer or scale up operations. Then vendors play a very key role and we must not uh, uh, undermine the importance of the vendors in the whole process of development and I'm talking about the vendors, all vendors under, under the umbrella that are required. So the URSs that have to be prepared and they're complying to that uh, by the vendors and then the softwares and the training part from this, uh, between the vendors to the scientists, etc. And then the COAs, uh, what are required and what is uh, uh, available. Then CROs also, as compared to uh, uh, the other functions, CROs, I would say that I would give a very high regard to the CROs in terms of the importance of the function. And there we generally do several uh, uh, different activities, which may include animal studies, test and analysis. Somebody was mentioning in the morning that for, uh, say, for example, neurovirulence studies or uh, characterizing the drug substances, viruses, bacteria. So we have to send some of those tests, which we cannot do in the industry. We have to uh, depend on the uh, CROs. Developing some reagents, getting the reagents, getting the clinical studies done through CROs, and then the clinical serology or the animal serology done. CDMOs, because some of, some of the times we don't have uh, uh, enough capacity in our uh, uh, manufacturing facility and the demand is more, so we may have to go for uh, uh, CDMO uh, uh, related uh, uh, facilities also. So we can do contract development of the uh, uh, processes or uh, products as well as we can manufacture the products. Now, whole lot of this gamut of different organizations, they require a lot of tech transfer activities, which I would like to highlight in uh, coming slides. So in terms of literary meaning, I can just give one of the definition that I have, uh, came uh, across. Technology transfer is the movement of data, designs, inventions, materials, softwares, technical knowledge or trade secrets from one organization or person to another in a way to achieve the objective of the transfer. So this is a very important uh, uh, phrase, to achieve the objective of the transfer. We have to have a clear objective why we are transferring the technology from one place to the other. And finally, have we achieved that particular uh, topic or, or the objective or not? So I went through CDC website, and this is the process of the technology transfer that is mentioned there, which means it starts from invention done in a particular laboratory. We do an invention disclosure to an internal team. It is assessed whether it is doable, means translated into the product or not, patentable or not. We do a protection in terms of IP, for example, trade uh, uh, marking or uh, IP filing, patent filing, etc. We do the marketing in terms of uh, sharing the uh, technology know-how with others, uh, if it is possible uh, collaborators or uh, partners coming in. Then licensing and then the financial return will come and then this will keep uh, uh, going in again. But I have a very different understanding of technology transfer than just this simple definition based on the different technology transfers that I have been involved in uh, my uh, experience. So first I would like to show the inter-organization technology transfers in recent times. We all know these some of the reports, Bharat Biotech and IV Association, Baylor Institute of Technology and Biological E, for COVID, of course, both of them. I work with Hester now, so I want to highlight that Hester also collaborates with so many academic institutes. So we got CSF and uh, sheepox vaccine uh, from IVRI through AgroInnovate. 
Then the next level of association where the uh, uh, academia developed the technology, AstraZeneca did uh, uh, the further development and the manufacturing separately and then technology was given to uh, Serum Institute also and maybe some other players also. So that also was there. Next level, which is a translational laboratory, which is Hilleman Laboratories. Uh, 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 Ravi was there in uh, uh, the morning, and I also worked for uh, um, several years at Hilleman Laboratories. So it is a translational research laboratory. We develop technology and uh, prepare it for the manufacturers. So this was one of them. Dr. Reddy's, the product was already there in Russia, so they want to enhance the capacities, so the, uh, the technology was given to uh, Reddy's and then the new uh, clinical trials were done. Biological E with Janssen, so industry to industry collaboration after the product has already been licensed. And then within the industry versus the CDMOs, contract development uh, research organizations. So, there is a whole lot of things that can happen or it is already happening and it is a daily routine for the businesses in vaccine world. And the, these are some of the general activities that we do in the tech transfers in the inter-organizational tech transfers. Marketing the technology means putting or pitching forward the technology package to the potential partners. Joining up the research with commercialization objectives. Creating a business plan, why it is bolded is, this is a very important topic. I have seen that sometimes we miss in making a proper business plan from both the sides and we then land into a delay of the project or maybe we don't land anywhere uh, in succeeding in the uh, technology transfer. Then assisting with, after the business plan has been identified, we assist in the infrastructure creation and between the two organizations. Then making sure that uh, the development of the staff, et cetera, and the research funding also is also set up. Negotiating the license agreements and partnerships. So this is also very important because we miss sometimes very important things in making a clear agreement. And then we keep on going to and fro just to ensure that, okay, this we would have discussed or we thought that this has been done but this is not done and then finally uh, uh, there are so many project delays. Then securing the patents and intellectual property rights if the patents have been filed, etc. Building innovation systems, now I am coming to the reci recipient side, innovation e ecosystem and structures to support the receipt of the technology. Know how transfer for execution of the activity from the donor to the recipient and encouraging the innovation and, and uh, engaging in the entrepreneurship so that we reach the objective. Now, this was more about when inter-organizational tech transfers happen. Let us talk about, this is not the only tech transfer happens. There is a tech transfer which happens so many times and very regularly within the organization. And these are the different stakeholders within the organization which are involved in uh, the in, intra-organizational know-how transfer, industry R&D lab to translational research lab or MSET lab, I can say that, and then from there to manufacturing, QC is always involved, clinical research team, and then clinical serology team, if at all they are uh, there. Fortunately, I led one of the clinical serology team. And this kind of association can be, or the transfers can be through documental transfer sometimes, and sometimes it can be technical transfers and it can be both also. And we can never neglect or ignore the importance of Q and RA function in making sure that all these things are done appropriately. Now I made a good diagram for uh, all of you to understand that this is the map of airlines going from one place to the other in the world, but this is not the airline map. This is the tech transfer network. And what it does is, it can happen from anywhere to anywhere. Just to simplify your thing, I have made it a little more simpler by color coding it, but still it is very complex. Let me take you through one by one. So academic labs, and this is again, just totally based on, the, I don't want to go into the exact theoretical things and all, which I have seen practically in my life, in my 20 years approximately of the industry career, more specifically focusing on industry in India, 
where we are and where we have faced challenges, not specifically to a particular company, but it is in general I am talking about. So we take some of the projects from, say for example, academic labs, where these projects can go, they can go to the industry R&D labs, or they can go directly to the translational research lab, like in Helaman case I uh, mentioned, we got the technology from, uh, which is in public domain already, that uh, uh, University of uh, Gothenburg. So the technology can go from academic lab to industry R&D lab or the translational research lab. It can go to a CRO because they want to develop some kind of concepts, animal studies they want to do. They want to develop some tests which they cannot do uh, in-house. And then if they want to do some contract development also to a next stage, then they can go to the uh, contract development uh, and manufacturing organization also. And you will see from this picture that there are so many reds here, and this shows the importance of the vendor and the scientist or the technical team association here. And this is a very strong association. We must understand that there should not be any flaws or misses there. I can just share one example that ATCG sends. We procure one of the example. Uh, uh, we procure one of the seed from ATCC. ATCC supply the seed in one particular condition. The condition is not read properly by the scientist. It comes in, say, for example, minus 80. It comes at 8 o'clock in the evening, the scientist is not there, the store person keeps it as, say, for example, 20 degrees Celsius. Or maybe, for example, uh, in normal freeze. What happens? So there can be some gaps. So we have to be very, very prepared. Then about the softwares, what we use in our labs, they are very important for us. So all those things, the COAs, the different kind of specifications for different raw materials and consumables. So vendors will see that everywhere this uh, arrow will be there, uh, two-sided arrow. So I'll just more focus on the other arrows. Now let us talk about what happens or where the tech transfers happen from industry R&D labs. They can happen from industry R&D lab to the technical uh, translational research, to manufacturing directly when there is no need of translational research. It can go directly to the industry-industry collaboration. We can share the technology from one lab to the uh, other manufacturer. CROs, there is a, a continuous engagement, and CDMOs also. Translational research organization, we can develop those technology to a scale up of a pilot scale, for example, and we can transfer the technology from uh, there to manufacturing and CDMOs. And as I mentioned, like the vendors, CROs are also very, very important, and you will see in uh, one of my next slides. From manufacturing QC or clinical team, we have association uh, for the industry-industry partners or uh, CROs and CDMOs. And you will see from this figure that how much important CROs are in terms of the association uh, for making a tech transfer successful. All the activities, for example, the testing part or the uh, animal studies or uh, clinical studies part, they cannot be done by every other organization. So different organizations, they have their own capabilities and strengths. But most of the uh, organization as on date in India, at least I can say that they depend on CROs for so many of the testings. And I have seen that there are significant delays that have happened and then we need to manage those things. We need to convince the management why it might have happened and all those things. So we have to be very, very clear again in this association also that we don't miss on the tech transfer or clarity of the business here. Now, as uh, uh, we saw that there are different stakeholders. Two minutes? Okay different stakeholders, so we uh, have some challenges which can be scientific, business, personal, political, policy related, societal, so I don't want to go into exact details, you will see from some of the wordings that I have, but many of these challenges can significantly delay the timelines, they can even crash your tech transfer program and there can be you know, bad relations between two organizations also. Most common challenges are lack of clear strategy and ch uh, changing business priorities, inadequate due diligence and lack of clarity in agreement, equipment and not matching or not matching, uh, uh, not maintained properly from recipient versus the uh, donor, 
make or specification of raw material consumables are not matching. Scale up challenges are common challenges. Conditions of the animal facilities, they vary from uh, one GLP facility to one GLP facility. So you will face a lot of challenges there. Population diversity in clinical trials, if we do a clinical trial in Andhra versus what we do in uh, Haryana, they may be very different outcomes. Lack of adequate skilled staff, that is one of the very big problem I have seen in my uh, career that we don't have enough skilled staff even if we want to take uh, the recent times also. So we have to work seriously on that as a, as a system. Organizational systems and training of the staff to make sure that they are clear about the objectives and the managemental uh, the objectives, department to department documentation practices, I have seen that there are huge gaps which need to be taken care of. Lab notebooks require a whole lot of efforts, but that has to be done, and then that is also a very big gap that I see that uh, no proper, uh, poor uh, developmental reports. People don't even know that how to write a developmental report, forget about assembling all of, whole of the data from lab notebooks to the developmental reports, which are required for regulatory submission in future. Poorly detailed SOPs. I hope you can, whoever is associated with uh, each of these activities will at some point of time must have faced all these things. So I don't want to go into these details, but I just want to highlight that these are the key points. And last is pushing dirt under the carpet. That is my pet, uh, you know, phrase. One person says, okay, I have done my job. Kisi ko pata nahi hai, do saal baad koon mein yaha pe rehne wala ho, nahi rehne wala ho. I'm not even bothered about that. I'll just put it. I don't tell anyone. People will take care of it. But after three years down the line, we come to find out, oh, this kind of data was not there, or this was manipulated, or whatever. I don't want to go into those details. So this is what is called as pushing dirt under the carpet. But mind it, the dirt will come out at some point of time, be it your internal team or be it the auditors. So we have to be taking care of that. The common excuse is this was not my job. I was not part of the project at that time. Nobody told me this. The email communication was not sent. It might have been told verbally. When project gets success, I never get credit. It gets, uh, you know, manufacturing team only gets credit. Lack of focus on organizational goals. This is a very important thing that people must understand, more specifically the younger generation. Even I have seen this gap in the elder uh, uh, senior people also. On personal KPI, we focus much more than organization, but I tell the uh, opposite. If organization grows, we also grow. This is not our priority. I have other jobs to do as well. Now, very interesting topic we discussed. Just two more minutes, uh, 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 Rajni. Academic and industry. Morning we discuss. The, I have seen this gap, as a, and this is again a favorite topic of mine, academy and industry co uh, collaborations. I see that we're happening very well in the uh, West. That also has developed over a time. We are also developing. But the common thing, who is superior? Who should get more credit in an academia industry collaboration? Who gains more credit? Funds. Funds become a constraint. IP expectations. Gap in approaches in developing the technologies. One is more on technical front, but industry needs on regulatory uh, perspective. Again, not going into the details. From industry to industry, uh, uh, lack of enough knowledge in the uh, uh, basic R&D staff. My job was till R&D people will say that my job was till small scale only. Why the manufacturing team is not able to take care of the next uh, uh, of their job? Things worked fine in my hand. It is not my job now to correct their uh, uh, things. CROs do not have adequate and trained staff. That uh, problem also I have uh, you know seen in my uh, uh, experience. And then uh, there were a lot of time that we had to spend uh, in take, uh, taking care of those uh, misses. Vendors did not share the information with me earlier. So they are also there. Now from the manufacturing and QC side, these problems come up. We just follow what was transpired by R&D team. Our job is not to do new R&D. The method should have at least been qualified. So R&D people did not even do, they, they just did okay some experiment and then they said okay this is my method and then we uh, are not able to qualify or validate it. SOPs were very poorly written, they are not explained how to add a particular substance and all. The person who was involved in R&D has now left the organization, how do I get the data? 
again i don't want to go into details in inter organizational uh, uh, experiences the regulatory expectations from country to country will differ and that's where we have to align clinical uh, the, the team and qc etc rigid reg regulatory requirement again these are all known things significant loss even if one batch fails so we have to be very clear about uh, uh, the plans processes bprs bmrs now this is very important that at CROs, the major issue is the lack of the staff with relevant expertise, pressure of high revenue and hence short timelines. You get whatever project you can get, but then they have to deliver also in a very short time, which is not feasible. So they give false commitments and then that's where the uh, time delays happen. Quality of material from sponsor is not up to the mark. That is one of the complaints that may get. Inadequate project management from CRO and or sponsor, so I have seen both sides. Now what are the avenues? I just want to cut long story short because the most of the answers were there in the questions itself. There should be a clear strategy, clarity of purpose, definitive business need should be there, then only the project should be started. Collaboration should be there, there should be a collaborative spirit. Communication should be very clear within the organization, between the organizations. Transparency must be there, otherwise you will fail at some point of time. Team spirit is a must. Empathy, we should understand the other side of it also. Ethical approach and then tech transfer as we know that this, this involves policies, procedures and values of each of the organizations. So if two organizations are meeting or two within de uh, organization departments are meeting, they may have their own systems which may not match exactly, so we have to respect each other, but we have to align ourselves. Proper due diligence and gap analysis should be done in advance, so that we are not repenting later on. Clear agreement must be done, sharing risk and rewards, because if you want to just share the reward, that is not a, uh, a done deal. It should be risk as well we should share. Joint funding or grant applications, assembly of right resources, collaboration does not, and this is a very strong statement I want to put in, Collaboration doesn't end at receiving milestone payment if it is intra-organizational uh, uh, transfer, but when the product reaches the market, that is the uh, thing. Effective communication. If we don't have effective communication, be it within the organization or outside, we will fail. These are some of the examples that WHO, because these are big organizations, they can influence so many uh, stakeholders. So the ACT accelerator, which came into picture during the COVID pandemic, there were so many successful uh, uh, collaborations uh, uh, done for vaccine, therapeutic and diagnostic things. I don't want to go into the And recently, mRNA vaccine uh, technology hub that is going on and people are uh, coming into that. So I already uh, uh, shared some the details. So technology transfer is significantly, it contributes to the global health. Both intra intra institutional tech transfers have significant number of challenges, but we can achieve uh, the goal. And we must not stop until the goal is reached. That is what is the quote I have taken from Swami Vivekananda. And I personally believe that research gain its true meaning when it gets applied into real life. And I just wanted to mention that we at Hester, we are uh, uh, making uh, poultry vaccines, animal vaccines, and now we are entering into human vaccines also. We have a full-fledged BSL-3 facility, so if uh, there is some potential collaborating uh, opportunity there with anyone, we'll be happy to discuss that. Thank you so much, and I welcome any questions now or later. Thank you. Yeah, please, please, sir. Because you say SOP not written, detailing not done. These are the hallmarks of a robust quality system. But you can have a quality system on paper. Okay. And then say, okay, I mean, I have a quality system. Or you can have a quality system which is working for you. Now, whatever you have written indicates the system is not working. No, I, I can I can share. So it, it relates to quality system also, as well as, as I mentioned, that the, all the different, like, business angle also. So there also we can miss somewhere. In terms of the financial agreement, business priorities also, there also we can miss. All those things, including the CROs also, the association with them. So they are all the pictures that I try to cover here. 
not only the within your organization but even outside of organization. No, but how you deal with other organizations you that also comes have, you need to have a procedure for that perfect perfect but so i have seen it's part of quality system fully agree but i have seen those misses whatever you can name it as but the, those misses have always been there i have seen that happening and uh, i just so thought of i raised this question because in the morning somebody said quality assurance quality controls are speed breakers they are not speed breakers they are they are there to assure you that your system is there the system is functioning fully agree fully right agree. so agree. your quality assurance system if it is functioning you don't have to worry if it is not there and it is not working i mean you don't have the product actually i fully agree i fully agree yeah Perfect. Thank you so much.